joka nauhoitetaan ja nauhoitus lähtee nyt käyntiin. Ja, tota, kirjoittakaa sinne chattiin teidän odotuksia tältä päivältä ja vähän sitä kielitaitoa myös. Okei, okay. so a first issue that we will discuss uh, briefly now before we start is that we're going to have a, a bilingual event. Uh, and uh, the idea is that we will have the presentation in English, but we can have the discussions uh, both in Finnish and in English. So I will let now Rika have this introduction uh, in Finnish as it's uh, an important topic to be bilingual from the beginning. Joo, eli me ollaan tässä paljon pohdittu, miten me saadaan tehtyä tämmöinen ö, monikielillinen tapahtuma. Ja nyt me ollaan tehty sellainen ratkaisu, että tämä esitys on englanniksi. Noi slaidit, tai nämä diat on tuolla sitten suomeksi ja englanniksi. Ja sitten jokainen voi käyttää sitä omaa kieltä, mikä tuntuu parhaimmalta. Mieluiten suomea tai englantia, vaikka chatissa luki kieltä espanjaa osataan. <tos> <tos> Mutta tota, et kysymyksiä voi kirjoittaa suomeksi ja sitten muutaan niistä sitten molemmilla kielillä. Okay, yeah, we can do this in Spanish as well. Uh, so we can then go to the next slide, yeah. Uh, so yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, parent involvement both in schools and daycares today. This is an event organized by Mothers in Business. And um, uh, as we just said, it's going to be bilingual, the presentation in English, but uh, uh, with discussions in Finnish as well. And uh, we hope you all feel uh, included in this with this approach. Um, yeah, uh, uh, briefly we have Helena connected online, uh, who can is helping us with the chat, and then Anu is helping us here also with hey, the hey. tech, sometime with the room, and Rika will be uh, Rika Rato will be your Finnish speaking host today. Yeah. Yeah. Sit meillä on täällä Silvia Padron, joka puhuu meidän nyt Englantia. <laughs> Okay, it's maybe a bit challenging to have a bilingual uh, event and hybrid, but we're doing this for the sake of, inclu sake of inclusion, so I hope it's fine for everyone and that everybody begins up feeling mm -hmm. included. Um, Should we say some words about each other? Like, sure. maybe introduce yourself? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, my name is Silvia Padron. I'm really passionate about parent uh, involvement and I am a volunteer, active, as we say here in Mothers in Business, and I am just a very involved mom. Uh, and I have a seven-year-old son that is uh, just started school. Hi, kaikille. Mä oon Riikka Rättö, ja mä oon tässä MIP Uudenmaan paikallisvastaavana, eli vapaaehtoisena täällä. Ja mulla on ö, kaksi pientä tytärtä kotona, melkein neljä- ja kaksivuotiaat. Ja tota, mä oon täällä itse asiassa sen takia, että mä tunnen Silvian mun opinnoista, ja sit me ollaan löydetty MIPin kautta taas uudestaan toisemme. Ja, yeah. you can go to the next slide. So our main goals today um, are to uh, that you end up knowing more about parent involvement here in Finland, and hopefully that you feel motivated to be more involved with your school or your daycare. Uh, we have uh, three parts, as you can see in the slides, and the first one we will share very important aspects of parent involvement. Uh, then in the second part we will let you know um, how to actually uh, do this parent involvement, some practical tips. And in the third part, we will talk about different debates that are currently taking place uh, here in Finland about education. And uh, although we will not go into detail on these debates, we will uh, uh, have uh, maybe the opportunity to discuss if we have a bit of a voice uh, in those debates. Yeah. Uh, we can go to this next slide then. Yep. Okay. So Having a community around school uh, and around daycare is a very important aspect of parent involvement. Um, at least it is for me, as I said, and very passionate about this uh, topic. Um, but when my child started going to daycare, uh, I hoped that I would get to know other moms in the daycare and uh, that we could organize play dates and uh, have make new friends and have a good communication with daycare. Uh, but uh, it was pretty much a disappointment because instead of finding a community, I sort of found a wall. And um, this was especially disappointing because of my own experience as a child where uh, parents uh, and families around my school were like extended families. We had trips uh, with the class every year. We had uh, paellas with the whole school. And um, it really felt like there was support and a network around school uh, and the daycare. So Rika, maybe if you want to share a bit your motivation for this particular parent involvement and community, and yeah, we want to do that. 
Joo, eli mä oon itse oikeastaan vasta herännyt tähän koko asiaan, koska tosissaan mun tyttäret on siinä päiväkoti-iässä vasta ja tässä on ollut tällaista uutta opettelua, niin mä oon nyt sitten oppinut, että tämä onkin ihan uusi asia, mihin mun on ehdottomasti kanssa täytyy olla, olla tietoinen ja jotenkin lähteä mukaan. Ja tosissaan tämä Silvian innostus on niin valtava, että kyllä se tarttuu jokaiseen ja musta on ehdottoman ihanaa olla täällä nyt tänään puhumassa tästä asiasta. Ja nyt mä annan oikeastaan Silvian puhua englanniksi sitten tämän loppuesityksen, mutta tosissaan suomeksi saa myös esittää kommentteja. Okei, okay. yeah. so it seems that my fashion is, uh, uh, I say, uh, um, contagious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we will be continuing now the presentation in English. A bit the idea was that you feel that you can ask questions both in English and in Finnish and you don't feel like even though the presentation is in English that you don't have, that this is just, we're really trying to keep it bilingual, but we're not going to be translating everything because then it gets boring and it might just, you know, uh, feel, uh, yeah, not so dynamic. Uh, so here we can see that there are really good reasons to build community around school and daycare. We have a, a list here. Uh, so parent involvement uh, helps building trust and it helps with conflict resolution. It is also a place where you can have uh, friendships, uh, both for the children and uh, the parents, and you can find a network and support there. So you can then share information and uh, receive information. And especially if you come from another city or country, it helps with children and integration. I don't know what your experience has been so far. You can feel free to share it in the chat if you want to. Um, but uh, then regarding inclusion and integration, we have added a, a link here, as you can see the, there in the corner, the Vahenmat Mukan Koulun ja Työelämän. I don't know how good am I at that now. Um, so uh, this is a program that was implemented by Vanta City, and uh, now it's replicated in Helsinki as well. And uh, it is uh, a program where integration of families with a migrant background is uh, uh, supported uh, with the school. So we will be sharing the PDFs at the end, and also we will send it uh, by email. So if you will have the opportunity to look at those links. You can see through the slides that there's going to be this hand. When there is a hand, that's, that there's a link to some additional information. Yeah, um, we can go to the next slide. OK, so parent involvement is also important for integration into the group, so not just for parents in society, but also for the children. Um, here we're referring to, into, you know, to the know. children of the class of your child and other parents. Um, uh, for example, recently in my child's class, uh, some children were behaving mean to each other, and because we have a WhatsApp group with the parents, uh, what could have been a bullying problem ended up been solved really smoothly, and uh, it turned out to be actually a quite a positive experience where actually parents were uh, getting to know better each other, and that was really positive. Um, I don't know if you want to say something about this. If you have, we can continue. Uh, no, I was just thinking of is there how our participants have felt? Is there is a community or wall? Yeah. Do you have? You can write on the chat uh, your thoughts or. Say here. Um, well, we can just continue, yeah. I guess, otherwise. Yeah. So, uh, uh, another important aspect to keep in mind is that communication is different from information. Um, I think that the Finnish education system is actually really good uh, with information. Uh, we receive quite high quality information both in daycares and schools. Um, some, sometimes overwhelming. I remember like, we've had this discussion where it's like Vilma, that is the message system in, in, in the schools, feels a bit like uh, too much. Um, but uh, as I said, receiving emails is different from communication and good communication is a space where we can ask questions and we can also uh, exchange opinions and even influence a bit what's going on. Um, I, I don't know if it's because the system is more individualistic or also because of data protection. Uh, but for example, whenever there's an incident in schools or in daycares, uh, you will know what has happened, but you will not know the name of the child that has been involved in the problem. Mm -hmm. And um, I know uh, you have had also, Rika, this experience. And uh, with the example I put before, that was the case. 
So the kids who had been mean to the others, the parents heard about the complaints, but they didn't know whose child had complained. And that creates a sort of weird feeling because they don't really know how bad this had been. And, and uh, because the parents had the option to share it in the WhatsApp group if they wanted. So they, they shared, this is what has happened. We received this complaint. Feel, feel, feel free to reach out to us. Then there were these parallel conversations that could be done, but the teachers normally would not share the names of other uh, children. Um, and yeah, I don't know if anybody has any uh, experience with this and if they find that uh, frustrating or normal. It's, of course, for the sake of and protection of the children's privacy, what is really good. Um, but then we have to keep in mind that uh, in, uh, in school, children also develop a sense of belonging. Um, therefore, they are not just individuals, but they also belong to a group. Um, some dynamics of a group, like having a very noisy class or uh, bullying, need to be addressed as a group, not as individuals. And uh, um, yeah, so it's really good when you already know the group that then you can tackle all of these issues uh, as a group. Um, related to this, we have added here a link to a program that is the Verso program, Verso Ohilma. I'm going to ask you if you have heard of this program and those online also, if you want to, you know, maybe raise your hand or just write if you've heard of this program or not. So uh, this is program is a, it's a tool uh, that is available for daycares and schools where conflict resolution is uh, a, approached with the figure of a mediator uh, that can be, normally it's another child where we're talking uh, about schools. And um, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, tool. Not all teachers or daycare directors have to use them, but the tool is there and you can use it. You have the link there, you can take a look and maybe it's you know worth it if you like the tool, you can approach your school and say, hey, we would like to use this uh, program. Has anybody, is online anyone? Has heard about this program or not? Onko kukaan tätä tällä kuullut tällaisesta verso-ohjelmasta, mistä tuossa äsken Silvia kertoi, tuosta löytyy tuo linkki, mistä pääsee sitten myös suomen kielellä tutustumaan siihen, siihen ohjelmaan. Eli ideana on siinä, että sieltä löytyy erilaisia materiaaleja konfliktien ratkaisuun. Nobody has. Okay, I, I think it's quite interesting because this program in particular actually is uh linked to the general idea that the Finnish society is trying to implement more the figure of mediator at many levels so in fact uh if I'm not mistaken uh for example for uh, trials and in, in courts they are trying to avoid going to a trial and having before like a, a conflict resolution uh conversation uh and so this is a way where the children can start knowing about this program already from daycare and from school. And um, my child had that program in, in, in his daycare. That's how I know about it. And I was asking about the school now, and I really hope that they can do that. OK, so someone has heard about it. Yeah, well, take a look at it. I really think encourage that you can take a look at it. And if there's maybe bullying pro pro programs or problems or things like that, uh, it's a tool that you can suggest the teacher or the daycare in the director to use. Okay, we can go to the next slide unless somebody has any questions so far. I guess not. <laughs> okay, so we have been talking about the importance of parent involvement. I hope that by now you are uh, all convinced that parent involvement is beneficial, like Rika was, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is really good. Uh, and so, uh, now we're going to move on to the how. So how can you be more involved? Um, and uh, so we're going to be talking about a bit how is parent involvement done here in Finland. Um, so first of all, we're going to be talking about the informal uh, parent involvement. Uh, so for this would be, for example, play dates or organizing a birthday party uh, for your child's class uh, with the classmates. This is a very common way of uh, parent involvement, uh, especially during daycare as you meet other parents when you're picking up or dropping uh, your child. And um, this particular uh, kind of parent involvement becomes especially important in preschool because then your child starts to have a sense of independence and might want to go to a neighboring house to have a play date. So they are old enough to go to the house and knock the door, but maybe with a six-year-old, you want to sort of know where they are going and coming and, and chatting with the other parents. So... Um, 
this is uh, a very important uh, way of parent uh, involvement. And um, uh, I, I think also a, bit, a thing with uh, uh, birthday parties is that uh, sometimes when there is a bilingual barrier, what I noticed in our daycare was that children who had different cultural backgrounds would not come to the birthday parties to, of, of the, when they were invited. And that was actually something that our parents group in daycare was sort of like discussing on how to make sure that every kid felt invited and, and could come. And I don't know what your experience has been with this, uh, if there are birthday parties organized or not, uh, but anyway, this is uh, informal parent involvement is the very important one during daycare. Yeah, my experience is that uh, they are inviting everybody and even though they are not speaking Finnish like myself <laughs> in Mazatlan, uh, we are just parents are talking them English when there is a person who doesn't understand Finnish, but then the kids are actually playing in Finnish because <laughs> they are learning so fast the languages. Yeah, definitely. And, but and it, it makes an extra effort, of course, if you want to have everybody involved, but that is super important because then the kids are friends, so you really need to know the parents too. Yeah. The, here we're going to give you some tips about informal parent involve, involvement, and the first one is be active. Uh, we all feel shy. You might feel shy because you're not good speaking Finnish. You might be shy because you're Finnish. <laughs> it is, no, yes. this is falling a bit in the stereotype. stereotype it's, it's a joke, but um, yeah. But we all. But the, the truth is that everybody is okay with having another parent. Uh, talking to them. So I really encourage you to be active and uh, uh, yeah, talk to other parents when you're in daycare. Um, also, uh, ask about existing groups or parents groups or ways of communication. Don't assume, this is again more for daycare, don't assume that they are going to tell you that there is a group, existing group. It was at least my, my case. There was a Facebook group and I didn't find out about it until like a year later. So be active, go and ask the daycare, is there a WhatsApp group? I say especially daycares because then the children move more between different groups every year. And if there's not a group, then create one. You know, a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group can be very useful. And um, yeah, so, and, and if you need to, you know, want to start that group and it's not there, ask the director for help. You can start the group and then ask the director to send an email to all the other parents saying there is this group, please come and join it. Um, also, another informal way of parent involvement, we're still here in parent involvement, is what we're doing now. So uh, going to events around parent involvement is a really good way to, uh, an informal way of participating um, uh, in in your child's uh, daycare and school. And there are many, many events also organized officially, uh, like for example, Helsinki City organizes a lot of workshops. So keep an eye on that and participate is always a really good way to be involved with the school. And the last tip that I wanted to say here that uh, concerning parent involvement, and I'm talking about informal when when we don't, you know, it's not a structure. So it's not that the, you know, like the school organizes it, but you do it sort of on your own. And one of the things that sometimes we do is we write letters when we are unhappy with something that's going on in the class. And uh, if you don't get a satisfactory answer or you don't get an answer at all, that might be the case because you're sending it to an email that you're not sure if somebody's getting, use the Palauta form. So the feedback form, official forms that are on your city. Uh, those uh, forms, they are always answered and they are keeping track. Uh, so that's a really important, I think, advice to keep in mind with the with the parent uh, in, when it comes to parent involvement, because you might feel that, oh, nobody's answering and maybe people are just overload. So do use the the parent involvement official, official ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if anybody until now wants to share some of their experience with this informal parent involvement. Uh, nothing on it for now. Yeah, then I can maybe chip in some more of my own experience with uh, writing letters uh, because the the um, we had an, like an informal parent group in, in in daycare. So we'll talk later about the formal ones that are the structured ones. So the informal parent groups are the ones in daycare where parents get together, but you don't really have so much of a of a stru official structure. And we were having some problems with the with the daycare because we were especially there was a, a vacancy of a teacher to support uh, teaching Finnish in the area. It was a daycare that had 
a very, very high uh, non-Finnish speaking uh, children. And we started writing letters and we did it with this uh, feedback form. And then after a year, we had uh, the, like the, the, the vacancy was filled and eventually uh, what was a part-time position became a full-time position. So I really encourage you to send those letters because it does give, it, it can give it tiring, but it's a, a very good way to change uh, things. Um, uh, okay, so one more thing, the one last thing here on the informal parent involvement that I suggest is browse the official official sites. Um, there is a lot of uh, help there and a lot of uh, support. I don't know if you knew that there is a specific uh, advisory services for English language and bilingual education. So for those of you who are uh, not fluent in Finnish, there is like an email there, there's a phone number there. I've tried the phone, it works. And they, you know, it, it was really good when I was considering what kind of uh, school uh, my child would go as we are uh, speaking bilingual. And yeah, so browse the services and you get a lot of oh, Move on to the next slide. Okay, so here our idea is to talk now about the formal uh, parent involvement. So formal parent involvement would be those structures that exist in, especially in schools. Um, uh, the informal parent involvement we've been talking uh, for now, it's uh, mainly in daycares. Uh, most children very early in school in Finland, something that many international people are just amazed. At the age of seven, you start to go on your own to school, and then parents don't have this spontaneous place to meet up anymore. Uh, so uh, then this, the, the formal structures become way more important because you don't have any more of this, like getting to know other parents uh, at the door of the school. Um, the two most important structures in schools are the parent associations and the school board. Can you say that in Finnish? <laughs> Uh, tärkeimmät siellä on näitä tällaisia virallisia väyliä tähän uh, osallisuuteen on nämä vanhempain yhdistykset, nimenomaan tämmöinen niin rakennettu tehty yhdistys, joka on tämä vanhempain liiton alla. Ja sitten on tämä johtokunta siellä koulussa. Ne on niitä virallisia väyliä, millä pystyy lähteä sitten vaikuttamaan. Yeah. So, those are really long words. Uh, and um, the, the, so... The Vahenpain Yhdistykset uh, are uh, associations that normally organize activities in the schools, like uh, parties and, and this kind of events, and they are really easy to join. And then the Jahtokunta, so the school board, is a very important board um, that actually uh, oversees and develops the school's operations. So it's a very powerful uh, structure. Um, in the parents' associations, you can join them anytime, uh, but uh, the school board, the members are elected every four years. Uh, we have a link there in the corner about the school board. Uh, this is for Helsinki City, but probably for other uh, cities, I'm sure this information, but works the same for all the schools. There, Koulujen ja Luokioiden Johtu, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so take a look at that. And I'm just going to ask who of you have heard that there is such a thing and no other representatives. I'm not talking here about the parents associations that many of you might have heard about, but especially about the school board. Who of you know that this body exists? Okay. Okay. Yhteistyötä sitä koulun toimintaa, kehittää koulun toimintaa. Täällä kysyttiin, kuinka moni on kuullut näistä johtokunnista. Eli ei puhuta näistä vanhempain yhdistyksistä, vaan siitä johtokunnasta, mihin on nämä vaalit neljä vuoden välein. Was it in a report year? The... Yeah, every four years. Yeah. yeah, it's four years elections. Yeah. So anyone, have you heard about this? So actually, uh, I don't know if anyone in the chat has heard about it, uh, but... Uh, so this this is actually the body that approves the budget of the school, 
and it has the it's the body also that uh, reinforces the strongest discipline measures uh, with children, and it's a body that has representatives of the parents, of the teachers, and also of the students and other staff of of the school. So I said this. Yeah, eli se johtokunta siihen kuuluu näitä vanhempia koulun henkilökuntaa ja sitten vielä ihan opiskelijoita. Yeah. So, but, have you heard about this uh, body before, Rika? Uh, no, 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 I haven't. Yeah, I've been quite surprised that uh, actually in some schools uh, they don't even have this um, this uh, this the representative. It's kind of a more of a figurative uh, body instead of the really powerful body that it, it should be. And outside of the of the um, of, of the schools, there are other organizations uh, that are like uh, uh, I, so they are umbrella associations that cover the other associations. So, for example, there is Bahen Pine Lito, and there is Helberu in in Helsinki, in Helsinki. I think there is Hemskola for Swedish speakers, and these organizations um, are uh, one of the problems is that they are associations of associations. So you need to have an association in your school in order to uh, be a member of these, uh, of these associations. But they are very interesting as associations that do a really important work. And you can reach out to those associations if you don't have a parents association in your, in your school. So if you don't have a parents association in your school, reach out to these associations and say, hey, can you help us to start an association in our school? Because one of the problems with parent involvement is that in those schools where there is little parent involvement, is those schools where you tend not to have these associations. So it's like a, it's like an inertia, and uh, there is a strong interest, for example, with, with from Helsinki City, but I think it's all over Finland. I was talking with some uh, pedagogical experts, and they really want to have parents more involved, but they have this feeling that you know where there is parent involvement, there continues to be, and when there is none, there is none. And uh, and so and they've been noticing a bit of a less uh, involvement in parents uh, in the in 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 the schools. One of the interpretations was that maybe parents are more interested in the hobbies, but I'm not so sure about this. I don't know if any of you belongs to any of these parent groups or, or associations. It would be interesting um, to know. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so the tips here, um, again, uh, be active, join the existing groups. Um, as I said, um, it's really easy to, to, to join the groups or ask for, for them to start. And another thing here, this is more for the non-Finnish speakers. When the, you go to a parents meeting, that is one of these formal ways of uh, parent involvement. Uh, if you need a translator, ask for it. For uh, official uh, um meetings, you have the right for a translator. And if you go to a meeting and it happens to be in Finnish and you don't understand what is being said, I suggest that you make it visible. You don't have, you know, you just maybe comment, maybe comment, like all of it. You'd be surprised because many people just, just don't realize that you are not following. Um, my own experience uh, going to a workshop organized, uh, for example, with for Helsinki from organized by Helsinki City, was that the, I went first to a workshop, but it was in Finnish. And so I asked and they say, oh yeah, we thought about it. And so the next meeting I wrote beforehand and I said, hey, I like, is there going to be you know English? And they said, you'll have a translator. And then the third workshop that was organized by these same people was actually bilingual with English. Mm -hmm. So by making it visible, you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, change things. And if you're a Finnish speaker and you notice that there are maybe some parents who are not understanding or following so well, you can offer to translate. I've seen that happening also in, in, in parents groups where uh, the parents just translate to each other. So again, be active. Don't let the linguistic barrier uh, prevent you from participating in your children's uh, school. Um, last thing in the slide here on the corner, there's two links. Uh, so one is the Vahempian barometry. Um, this is a, a, a survey that was done by Vahempian uh, Lito. It was uh, asking more than 7,000 parents about uh, parent involvement. And uh, one of the very interesting things about this uh, particular um, survey is that 86% of the respondents were women. So when we're talking about parent involvement, maybe we should be talking about 
mother involvement. And I think that this is very important because we have a lot of support or a lot of sort of awareness of the, um, uh, the, the workload that having a baby means or having a toddler means, but sometimes we forget about all of this effort that supporting your child in school uh, uh, means. So for example, mother in business does a lot of, uh, you know, sort of awareness on making sure that moms have support for early childhood education, but we don't have so many activities around parent involvement. And uh, the second thing that I want to mention about this uh, survey, this Bahem uh, the environment is that uh, one of the main findings was that when asked about parent involvement, then one of the main complaints was that the lack of communication with the school. So what we've been saying about communication and information is backed with uh, with this uh, kind of, of service mm -hmm. surveys. Um, Voisin sanoa muutaman yeah. sanan siinä on se hallitusohjelma kysely, se on siis suomeksi, mutta siellä on siis tämmöinen vanhempainliiton järjestämä kysely, kysely tästä hallitusohjelmasta ja siinä, miten otetaan tota varhaiskasvatus ja niin kuin ylipäätään opetus huomioon, niin tämä on esimerkiksi yksi keino vaikuttaa, niin käykää vastaamassa siihen. Yeah, so for course what Rika just said about the hallitusohjelma kysely, the survey, uh, this is a survey that is now going on. Yeah. It's about the government plan. Unfortunately, it's only in Finnish. Uh, although the barometry, the report is only in Finnish and Swedish, but the survey was done also in English. So this new survey is only in Finnish as far as I've seen. Um, but one of the things, a tip that I want to give you here, if you ever receive the request for a survey, do answer that survey. It might feel like it takes time and energy, but these surveys are what then the organizations use to give us a voice. So thanks to this survey, Vahen uh, Pine Lito can then represent us and say, you know, this is what parents feel like. You know, they can say 80% of the respondents were women. They can say, we don't have a good communication. And so please fill that one survey also and pass it on to your friends. Remember, that's probably one of the best ways that we can have a voice on these matters. Even for now, it's just a Finnish voice that <laughs> to fill those uh, this the service. Um, yeah, we can go to the next uh, slide. So this is the third part that we were mentioning. Um, probably many of you have heard that there's uh, different debates going on around education in Finland and in Helsinki, and um, there are a lot of voices and a lot of opinions. But what seems to be a common agreement is that their system is in crisis and there needs to be some changes. Um, so let's take a look at some of these uh, current debates. And um, I think we're good in time to go. We can stop a bit in, yeah. in each one of them. Um, maybe one first question is if you have heard of any of these debates and if you want to mention anything, those at home, you can mention in the chat. Um, so the first one is the lack of staff of early childhood education. This was a big, big issue here in Helsinki last year. So um, after Christmas, if I'm not mistaken, some of the club uh, activities after school had to be closed because the staff in those uh, activities had to be moved to daycares for early childhood education. So that was like a, a very big uh, problem uh, here in Helsinki. That's the debate we're referring about. Uh, then another debate is about the use of uh, phones in classes and also the use of digital tools in class. So one of the questions there is like we're constantly being told that uh, we shouldn't be letting our children so much in the screens, but then many of the education tools are exactly that, uh, you know, uh, learning through digital tools. Um, this th the third debate that we're mentioning here is the, the decline of the results of the PISA uh, uh, yeah, the visa results. And uh, what is particular about this uh, worsening results on Finland, they used to get really high results, and that was what was back in the, the good, really good education system, is that the results are getting, are worsening, especially not with the top students, but with the sort of more average students. So it's that student that hardly makes it, it's there where really the system is failing. And this goes, links with the uh, with the other uh, debate that is about uh, segregation in schools. Uh, there's a lot of debate about, uh, around that, and um, this uh, goes you know, through the whole society and many, many problems on how to solve that. And uh, there's been huge debates uh, around this uh, in, in Finland. 
Um, a more recent uh, debate that we're pointing out here is the availability of studies in English for international families, especially for those families who moved recently with older kids that they don't have access to classes in English. Uh, so um, that's another big debate and we've heard of children who find themselves in a limbo because uh, they cannot continue their studies in, in English. And then they might, they might be able to go to studies in Finnish, but uh, it's not always obvious and that can be uh, very problematic. And uh, the last one that we're pointing out here is the S2 track system. So this is the SCAX. So the system where children who don't have Finnish as a, a native tongue, they get these classes as support. And there's been uh, repetitive uh, voices claiming that this system actually creates segregation and is not a very good uh, system. Um, yeah, we can move to the next. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody wants to mention anything now briefly on those debates. Um, or and then move to the next slide. Yes, please. Okay. So as I said, we will not be going into detail on those on those debates, uh, but uh, we are giving you a link here to this book. Uh, this book, uh, Finland's Famous Education System, was published last year. It's written by many um, authors, like it has 28 chapters. Uh, it's written by uh, several Finnish universities, and it has a lot of the background research, so the academic research, around all of these debates. So many of the articles that you read about what's happening with segregation, you'll find information in this, in this book. Uh, you can get uh, the book in this uh, link. So you just go to the link and you can download the PDF. The authors made the book for free because the idea was to actually share this information. And maybe Helena, you can now share the PDF. Mm -hmm. If, uh, you know, uh, we will send it also online later, uh, but, um, uh, if Helena can share it now, can okay, is, is that okay, Helena? Can you or yeah? Uh, eli tässä on tota tää tehty tämmönen kirja, joka käsittelee siis uh, Suomen koulutussysteemiä ja tämä on nyt englanniksi tämä yeah. <laughs> tämä teksti, mutta tota siellä on tosi hyvä sisällysluettelo ja sitten voi esimerkiksi katsoa sitä introa ja sitten conclusion eli nämä yhteenvedot, niin siitäkin saa jo tosi hyvää käsitystä, jos tuntuu että englanti ei ole just se lempparikieli, mitä lähtee tekemään. Ja Silvia oli itse asiassa täällä kirjan julkistamistilaisuudessa ja siellä sanottiin, että oikeastaan tämän kirjan niin kuin, tärkein otsikko on toi alempi tuolla. Eli nämä Anwun's Insight into Finnish Schooling, eli just tällaiset, mitä siellä niin kuin, ikään kuin siellä pinnan alla kytee. Yeah, so um, one of the questions that we wanted to ask today was like, uh, if like without going in detail in these debates, would be like, do you feel that you have a voice in these debates? Do you feel that you have a saying, or do you feel more that when you read about these debates, you are at the mercy of decision making? Um, I'm gonna guess that we all feel pretty much at the mercy. And here, the tip I'm, I will give is that what you can do is join associations, like uh, as I said before, mothers in business. We do advocacy for uh, to help with the problems of mothers, and I think that parent involvement is one of these uh, problems. And there's other organizations like Vahen uh, Painlito, as I mentioned before, or other organizations like Familia Ru. So all of these uh, associations give uh, a lot of give, give us voice. So I would say joining these associations is how you can uh, get a voice in in these debates. I don't know if anybody has a question or a comment about the debates. Oikeastaan tuo, mitä Silvia just tuossa sanoi, koska on muistanut, että käytiin läpi tätä ohjelmaa, ja sitten haluan vähän sillä, että mitä mä voin tehdä, niin just nimenomaan se, että mikä on tullut, että on näkyvä, osallistu, etsit semmoinen paikka, missä sä pääset vaikuttamaan asiaan. Okay, we can go actually to the last slide. So, this is our last slide today. Um, uh, please, uh, when, we, when we send the PDF, on the on the email uh, uh, feedback, we will have a like you have the PDF and there will be this uh, the, a link to a survey. We're doing this survey to see if there are any of these debates that we've been talking about one that you find particularly interesting. If we find that there's enough interest, we might then organize other uh, seminars in the future. 
Uh, in particular, we are planning to have a seminar in November around uh, parent involvement for like bilingual schooling. So the idea is to give more information on bilingual schooling, and that this would be organized by MIB, uh, the international branch. But if there's any other of these um, uh, se seminars topics that you find would be interesting, you can you know uh, fill in the survey or reach out to us. You can, if you're like super, super interested in it, you can become a volunteer, like an active here in medicine business and help us organize uh, more of these events. Mielellään kuultaisiin nyt teidän kokemuksia tai ajatuksia, voi sinne chattiin kirjoittaa. Ja tosiaan me jaetaan tämä PowerPoint-esitys teille pdf ja siellä on sitten tämmöinen kysely. Eli siinä on vähän, että halutaan kartoittaa, että onko tämä asia semmoinen, mikä herättää kiinnostusta, mistä halutaan kuulla lisää. Nyt on marraskuussa tulossa tämmöinen tapahtuma, se on tuon MIP Insunationalin puolelta, eli se on sitten englanniksi. Ja siellä käydään vähän läpi tätä tämmöistä kaksikielisyys asiaa sitten kouluissa, mutta nyt on ehdottomasti sellainen hetki, että jos tuntuu, että joku aihe herättää kiinnostusta ja haluaa enemmän siitä, niin sitten tarttukaa hihasta, laittakaa mulle LinkedInissä vaikka viestiä Riikka Rättö, tai sitten ottaa ihan toimistoa yhteyttä ja ryhtyy vaikka vapaaehtoiseksi ja lähdetään yhdessä sitten miettimään, miten me saadaan se meidän ääni kuuluviin. Ja tässä on ideana tosissaan, tämä kysely on vaan meille, tai ne vastaukset, eli siinä on vaan se, että lähdetään kartoittamaan, että mikä, minkälaista mitä kiinnostusta tämä herättää? Mitkä on tärkeitä asioita, mihin MIPin kannattaisi lähteä tekemään tapahtumia esimerkiksi tai lähteä puhumaan? Yeah. I don't know if we have any questions or any comments um, so far. Um, no one here. Anyone online? No? So I think this is pretty much what we had to say today. And um, yeah, so we can go to the very last slide. So yeah. Thank you very much for today, and uh, yeah, let us know if you think that uh, this was interesting. Also, if you think that uh, uh, there would be other relevant topics that we could talk about around parent involvement, mm -hmm. uh, we will be sending a, a feedback uh, email after the after today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, sit ehdottomasti jos tota on kommentteja, ajatuksia, sitten MIPin yksi tärkeä asia, että pääsee verkostoitumaan. Laittakaa vaikka sinne chattiin teidän LinkedIn-profiilia, että päästään yhdessä verkostoitumaan ja jatkamaan tätä keskustelua eteenpäin. I was just talking about how to put the LinkedIn profile or something on the chat so we can connect and actually get to know each other. So then we are having a little bit louder voice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, we can maybe just disconnect now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Joo, Katri on laittanut sinne viestiä, että hyvä herätellä näitä aiheita. Thanks, Katri. Nice to hear. Yeah, I have the same feeling when I met Silvia for the longer time. I didn't have my children when we have met actually at the first time, but it was nice to get to know all the information and yeah. learn some new things. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, I think it would be also maybe nice to open a discussion in our Facebook group to get like examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. case stories. I yeah. think that's always inspiring. Yeah, actually mm -hmm. one of the ideas that we were having with this was to uh, see a bit how can we have this discussion mm -hmm. because um, of course, you can, you know, organize an event, and I, I don't know how would that work in the in the Facebook group to open such a discussion. Um, mm. I don't know if that if that is uh, some comments, comments, comments. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but maybe with the privacy thing. Are you thinking about kind of that one? Uh, I know that some some of the event have made a, like their own <laughs> spin-off thing. They have yeah. organized the WhatsApp group, and then they mm. have been continue the conversation there. Yeah, I think that actually one of the questions around this is if this conversation, you know, belongs uh, also in other uh, organizations, like probably Vahen Painlito would get uh, more of conversation around this topic. So also to reach out to other organizations that are around the same thing. So Mothers in Business, Vahen uh, Painlito, uh, Familia Ru, and all of these mm -hmm. others that are maybe ones are more around parent involvement and others are more around families or around other things but and we have we are actually trying to see what about yeah. mothers in business where is that space for 
um, parent involvement in mothers in business, if we have really the place for that, or or if the audience that we have is mainly an audience with moms with uh, younger kids. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I have a question. Now we are talking about parents involved in kids education. During these actions, do you think it's a good idea to take the kids to, uh, to know, uh, get the kids to involve in when the parents is trying to communicate with the teachers? So do, are you asking if it's good to have the children involved when you're talking with the teachers about uh, yeah. issues? Yeah. Actually, what I have seen so far uh, is that Norm, you have spaces to talk with the teacher, just yeah. with the parents, yeah. and there is an evaluation yeah. uh, that is done, uh, I think, for example, after Christmas, yeah. when you talk with the teacher and the child is present. Yeah. So that is part of the of the parent involvement. And it's uh, many of the parent involvement activities are actually family involvement. So when you are at the parent association, yeah. although you meet with, the, with other parents, what yeah. you organize is activities yeah. where the families are together. Yeah. So the children are also involved there. So there is definitely, I think, a place for children when there is parent involvement. Yeah. Well, I'm just having this question. Is it also good to bring this uh, this kind of question of the teacher already when the kids are so small? Because the kids, the teacher needs to have the authority so they can teach the kids. But when the kids, if the kids involve in too much of questioning the teacher, it would be a good idea. Yeah, I, I see people listening. Oh, yeah, there is a, a bit, maybe I can unmute it. No, I think no, the, it's just, just making sure if, yeah. if people are still following, then I can uh, translate the, the, the question that Chang Pan yeah, was having to you. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'll, yeah, uh, for those who are still interested, yeah. So Chang Pan was asking if it was really a good idea to have the children involved in the in the in these discussions, I think that one of the uh, something that I hear often around parent involvement is exactly a bit this idea of like uh, that that parent involvement can be perceived as a burden for the teachers. Uh, but I don't think that's really the case. With parent involvement, we are not talking about questioning uh, the work of the teachers, and we are not talking about uh, getting into that kind of of of, of uh, discussion. So I think that different discussions have a different space. So when you're talking about your own child and the education, then it's a discussion with the teacher where the authority of the teacher is very important. Yeah. But here we're talking more about things like behavior in the class where probably parent involvement can actually help the teachers. Because if you have a, a whole class that is being noisy, uh, just talking one, with one child at the time, it sometimes doesn't work so well and you need like the whole group and all the parents sending the same message. So I don't see ever parent involvement as something that would hamper the teacher's work. It's something that is supposed to support and help the teacher's work. But sometimes there's a bit this feeling of like that parent involvement. Yeah, yeah, and parent involvement can be perceived like you are actually stopping the, the work of, of, um, of the teachers. And I don't think that should be ever the case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for those uh, questions. Yeah, and I noticed, yeah, that the, there was the, the mention of Familia, uh, Familia Rue, that is the fifth, that is a, also a really a good orga organization for um, uh, parents uh, with uh, and families with uh, bilingual or multilingual circumstances. And I think uh, it's really good to reach out to those other organizations. I think that we could organize things with uh, Familia, for example, and also reach out more to behind by need of to have some of these uh, tools also available in English. So maybe that that would be maybe what mothers in business could do more than own this discussion would be to, you know, reach out and sort of influence in, in the discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Um, thank you those online also. Kiitos kaikille osallistumisesta. Ja jatketaan keskustelua vaikka siellä linkkarin puolella tai sitten Käykää MIPin sivuilla ilmoittautumassa vapaaehtoiseksi, niin päästään juttelemaan vielä lisää.